Hello and welcome to an impromptu episode of Talking Baseball. It's going to be called episode number 527. Fernando Tatis Jr. suspended 80 games for PEDs. No BBD, no Jake. It's Friday night and they're young. I put my baby to sleep, Trev. I got my monitor right here since I'm single dad this weekend. I love that. I, I got about five of those things just sitting around my house right now. Nice. How are you doing on a Friday? Hit with some big news. I was in the car with my kids and Olivia and uh, you sent the text and then bam, my phone exploded with all my friends talking baseball. Uh, it's, I said it on my Twitter. This is like a sit down moment for me. Like what? Yeah. Because of who he is. This isn't just like, this isn't just a good player getting tested positive and being out it's fernando tatis jr who essentially mlb is marketed as the face of the game james yeah he's the most marketable young star that's why i tweeted out this sucks and man i'm always kind of confused how i didn't give a lot of context but everyone was like thought i meant it sucks they suspended and i was like no it sucks that the most marketable young star the game has come across in a while like and think he was on the cover of the show. He was everywhere. They locked him up for a big contract. I've been talking about how fun like Fernando Maney has been. And now it's, I don't know what it's going to become in 80 games, but this isn't the first part of like the bad PR saga, I guess, you know, he, he he's, it's been the motorcycle accident. And then according to him accidents and then yeah. how they handled that. It. Yeah, like that's what he said when he got in an accident. He, they said, which one? He said, which one are you referring to? So like, multiple accidents. And then and then all like we've been joking because they said he was a slow healer and it would, would suck if he took this or whatever. But to heal faster. But I think this steroid, I don't know how to pronounce it. It ends in bowl and starts with the cloth or something like that. I think you nailed it. Clostable. I. No, I'm not a scientist. I was reading up on it. It's one of the <laughs> ones that has had like false positives, but also not really. Like it's still, it's not like a lot, but it ha they say it has happened. But they also say you need to be taking it for a while for it to hit. Again, yeah, we don't know anything about Nothing. this. And that was my first initial reaction was like, well, there's like Turinabol. That was like the Chris Colabello thing. And, that happened to quite a few guys where they even took it as far in the UFC, I believe, to just get rid of that because guys were just getting popped too much for it. And like there was something suspicious. I don't know if like this is the case. He's saying he took some medication for ringworm. Now, when I was a player, James, mm -hmm. and you had problems, you went to the team doctor or if you're not in the if the team doctor is not available, you go to a doctor that's adjacent to the team and you get your prescriptions filled and you get all of that stuff through the team. You want to know why you do that? So dumb shit like this doesn't happen. If what he's saying is true. He it's said he so, had, it's so avoidable. He a, said he had a, a medication. That's, that's kind of, I mean, I don't know anything, but so many people that get popped off say, I didn't know I was taking, taking something else. Like, the number of people, and clearly they're still testing. It's part of the thing now. The number of people that get popped is very small. This is the third one this year. There was two last year. I was just at the Wikipedia that had the full list. I refreshed the page, and people are fucking with the Wikipedia so much that now it, it literally just says players who have been tested positive. It just says Fernando Tatis Jr. Like, they, he's the only one because some people are messing with it, which... It was a pretty good list going at one point. It's, I don't know how to put it, man. It's so disappointing. And like, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but like, I, I kind of like the more and more I've sat with it now, it's been an hour since the news broke. We're talking about this. It just, it's, it's even almost worse if it's, no, it's not worse. It's, I don't want to say that it's bad. If it's negligence, it's just as bad. A little bit. That's what that's that's the thing. Like, you know, we're 10 years into this now. What was the first suspension officially? It was 2005. So more than 10 years in this, but I know testing was different then. But we're pretty deep into like regular testing and then all these accidental popping and things. So there's a lot of 
streams of conversations to have. I guess this is just like the initial reaction of like, damn, this sucks for baseball. 80 game suspension. Talk about it from the Padres. There's some fun ties. But this is the biggest name to get popped since Cano. And Cano was kind of fading. Yeah, this, this, and, is, this is like almost on the same level as a Ryan Braun. Except yeah. maybe well, a little less shit was going on in this instance. Like there was a lot of stuff going on with Bronny. And but Braun was MVP, but also Braun was of the time where like names were popping up nonstop. It was like the witch hunt time where like it was like boom, 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 boom. Since it's been kind of just like three a year, Cano was a big one. But then I think in people's heads, it was like, well, he's a fading superstar sure. and he's trying to regain youth, even though he might have been taking it the whole time. We don't know. But I mean, this is a 23 year old kid, too. Four. I always want on the rise. I don't know if we've had this. You you wonder like there's so many things that go through our mind. I think it's okay to have these thoughts and talk about them. Like how long has this been happening? Has this been something that he's been doing, and and skirting the testing program for years, or is this really he took the wrong medication? Like I don't know. I don't think any of us know, and probably James will never know. That's kind of the problem here is we'll just never know. It's 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 clouded and. I guess it doesn't really matter though, because he can't play this year. He's going to miss the beginning of next year. He obviously knew about it. There isn't a, so what happens is you get told the PA gets told you get told first, and then you decide if you want to appeal. Okay. He had, I guess what he said is he initially appealed and then, and then decided not to. Yeah, so you can't that's you can't not appeal but then claim innocence. Yes. You know what at I'm saying? Give it, at least give it a chance. Yes. Judge just hit number 46 on the air. Did he really? Yeah. Baseball needs is this gonna be like the steroid era and and the home run chase pump, all wrapped pump, into one season? Pump the home run chase, pump the Let's home go. run chase. There's uh when did the, you think the team knew? They because... the team is saying they found out today, and like so maybe he dropped his appeal today. So because you... they're, yeah, they're supposed to be that window where you have the opportunity to appeal it. So if you actually win your appeal, it's not like where accusation is just as bad as a conviction type thing. So you know, I'm without being absolutely certain, I'm 90% certain this dude was playing the rehab games knowing this was coming down eventually. I mean, maybe he thought he had a chance in the appeal and finally he's just like, oh, it's not going to work. So here it is. And I better start serving it now. It's Do you uh, think the Voight situation changes if they know? What do you think changes about the trades if they know? They probably still go after I think they they got to thank the Lord they made those trades. Yeah, but but the whole thing was like they thought Tatis would come back, which would play DH center a field, little bit, kind of. Or yeah, now they would. Now I wonder if they would probably not Hosmer because they wanted the money eight, but Boyd maybe is still on the team as DH spot. Yeah, and look, I mean, if you're a Padres fan, though, it's terrible. I'm sorry, I feel really bad for you, but you still have a really good team that's been doing it without him the entire year. You know, the upgrades still help your team. You still have a very good shot at the postseason. Is it deflating as all hell? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And and you know what? He's never going to be viewed the same either. That's what I was going to ask. So we've had some steroid guys, right, recently that are currently playing, serve their suspension and are playing. They're not of the caliber of markability of Tatis nor the young star and the swagger and all that, but Frankie Montas, who the Yankees just traded for, he got popped. He did 80 games. Tim Beckham, uh, he got... 80 games. Michael Pineda got 60 games. Uh, and then who's Ramon Laureano, Pedro Severino got him this year, but Laureano's back. And I feel like none of them are tainted, but I don't think they're big enough. Yeah, exactly. T- like tainted for sure, but not like he was on a hall of fame. I mean, granted it's only been a couple years. I mean, what is, how many games does this dude even play? Hey, not that many, but even like numbers aside, cause I don't think, I mean, people are just going to kind of like, well, who knows he was, the face they were trying to make him the face of baseball. The guy's numbers put him on a Hall of Fame trajectory. James, he's had a 969, a 937, and then a 975 OPS. How many games has he played? Over a thousand games. Really? 
Yeah, he's he's had excuse me, a thousand games. He's had eleven hundred plate appearances, two hundred seventy three games. Okay. So I was like, I was like played, really? Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know why I said that. In 2019, he came up, played 84 games, almost played all the games in 2020. He played 59 out of 60 games in 2020. He played 130 games last year. Led the league in homers last year. Led the league in homers last year. I mean, this guy, so, the guy's numbers. Is that, about, is that is that in question? Probably. How could this is be? this is this is a a muscle building. This is the same thing that D Gordon got popped for. I just, I just don't, I just don't know how to process this, dude. The only thing that I've learned hanging around MLB players like you and others is that, okay, so let me backtrack. To, I, I said in a tweet, like, sucks that he cheated. And I get lit up on some, or I saw a couple of responses and quote tweets be like, blah, cheated. Okay, dude. And I'm like, I, I I can I say that because that's how I know players say it. Like play like you and other people get get mad. Like well, because we're all we're all competing for the same thing. You're competing for a World Series title. You're competing and also on a more personal, a spot in the big leagues, um, a roster spot, if you will. And like if you're if you're a guy that is as natural and doing things the right way. Of course it pisses you off, man. In any walk of life, I don't care who you are, what you do. If somebody else is doing something better than you and you know, they've taken something or done something to get ahead. Like that's, that pisses you off. And this is at an extreme level because of the money and the notoriety and all that stuff. I think that like, there's a perception that because back in when Giambi was shooting himself up on the bus and that, and it was just a known thing in those years, there's a perception amongst fans that I had that like all all players, even if they didn't do it, it's kind of like if you don't smoke pot in high school, but your friends do, but you don't care. You're just like, yeah, they do, you know, like, but I don't personally, like, it's just my choice. But I was surprised to talk to, to, to players, especially like about a rod where they're like, no, dude, he's the biggest fucking cheater in the game. I don't like him. And I was like, Oh shit. Okay. So there's a contingent of players that aren't just like, wasn't for me. But, but everyone did it. There's yeah, players I mean, that legit like get fired up about it. There, I don't think there's any player that's like, oh, fuck it, who cares? Nobody feels that way. It just, it's it's personal. You take it personally. And like, I, I, I went on Instagram Live and I said this, like, I, I think there's plenty of time to repair his image, possibly. Yeah. I mean, he's got so much ahead of him. There's even pl- with the I 80s. mean, every, America loves an apology and a, and a redemption story. It's like our it's favorite just thing that, in this like, country. He, yeah, man, the fact that they were pushing him so much to grab the youth and everyone, everyone wants to be Tatis and, and look like him and play like him. And it's now it's like, I have to tell Teddy about him and tell him like, what's, what, what's going on. And this is why he's not going to be in the postseason. This is why, you know, like I, he's at an age now where he's asking me these questions. So it's like the role model thing. He's gonna have to work really, really hard to get that back. Like if he can. Yeah. And then the PR game, he got his money, but wild. What does this do for um the Padres? I mean, they still got a good squad without him. They got Soto for the next two years. Does he lose his star? Like when he finally returns, like is it Machado's team, Soto's team? Like, is it gonna be very hard for this to become Tatis's team? Cause it was kind of that way last year when he was healthy and in 2020. I think that here's a statement that my friend Anthony Swarzak used to tell me all the time. Performance trumps all. If this dude comes back and he's got a 965 OPS and he's crushing balls and he's helping the team win, it gets a little bit easier to forgive him and you start to you know, say, all right, maybe it was just a mistake. Maybe this is who he really is. So if he comes back and bangs, dude – it's just the way it is. People are going to forget about it. Other players, other cities, not going to forget about it. Yeah. You're going to get booed one. everywhere. In San Diego, I think it's – I I play with dudes that are, are steroid dudes. Everyone knows my relationship with Bron. Like, that took us a while to get over, but eventually, you know, like, I can I consider him one of my best friends right now. Um, But it's it takes time, dude. It takes time. No matter, even if he comes out and crushes it, like – in San Diego, sure, they'll forgive him. And his teammates will too because you got to. That's just part of the game. But I think around baseball, it's going to be 
it might be tough to get back on that level he was at. I want to ask a question that's like a half joke, maybe 90% joke. It's kind of like a text message with your buddies thing, which we can't really do on this show anymore because it's a lot of people listen now and then they spin it, but I still, it's trolly. Robinson Cano busted twice. Padres pick him up. He's there for like a week. Oh, no. <laughs> Tatis is recovering. Did Damn, that I have, didn't even, I didn't could even... that have been the awry like the awry move, the one conversation the Padres like wish we didn't bring Cano around? <laughs> the worst mistake we made. Oh my gosh. People are already saying that the White Sox won the trade, <laughs> all this stuff. I don't know. As far as Padres, the like actual team. Sure, you'd like to have this dude back, but I don't think they uh, you the way they'll approach this in the clubhouse is fuck it. He hasn't been here all year. Like that's the exact way they'll approach it. We just got an upgrade, two upgrades, three upgrades. Like the boys are here. We're good enough to do it. Let's go do it. Like, so they'll, they'll have a mini rally around this. Definitely going to be some weird vibes. Cause they're going to have to answer questions, which sucks for them. That's another thing. Hey, Tatis Jr. You're making your fucking teammates answer these questions, bro. You're making me and Jimmy on a Friday night. Come here talking about this. So you're letting a lot of people down, man. That is, that is like the other thing is don't, don't make, don't make your teammates have to answer questions. And now it's like a whole thing. It's a whole thing. And weren't him and Machado kind of lipping back and forth last year? Yeah, but then I think I even did a breakdown. It was, it was more, it was Machado being a fiery leader. Like, 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 like pick it up. Like pick it up. Like get, like, like stop sulking. Like it was that vibe. Um, it was the third, it was a coach that they had a real problem with, and Machado was kind of given tough love. To go back to your point, like the pecking order of the Padres, like if Tatis was at 1A with Machado, he's not there anymore. Like it's Machado, probably Soto, probably Joe Musgrove, Probably Blake, like he's moving down the pecking order as guys that can stand up in a room and command it and like make decisions and be that influence. Like he's really is gonna have to earn that back. Initially, it's gonna be like, hey, like Kayate, basically. What does that mean? Quiet. Or like shut up. I knew that. I knew that. You knew that. Silencio. Yeah. I'm Italian. We just go basta, basta. It's going to be that way. And man, like, again, I hope it was negligence because it makes it a little bit more palatable for me, but also that's really dumb. And like, you should never take anything that's not from, that's why, that's why there's a clause. The players association bargained for this. They supply supplements. They like, you get everything through the team because they don't want this to happen. I just, I just have to think that, because so few guys get popped out of how many people get tested. Like we're talking what 300 guys get tested, minor leaguers, major leaguers, like way more than that, I guess is all the no, minor there's leagues. 700, there's 750 people in the big leagues at any given time. Okay. Not a math guy, but, um, or more than that. Cause they've upped the rosters. I'm sorry. Yeah. Whatever. So let's say a thousand guys, including like yeah. guys that come I'll up say right down. around a thousand guys. Yes. What's 40 times 30, 1200. Were you really going to bust out the calculator for that? <laughs> Not a math guy, Trev. 1,200. So we're saying three guys a year out of 1,200? That's 0.0025%. So it's tough to be like, yup, another one just slipped through the cracks. It it would happen more. You know, if it was a false positive or or negligence, like, I don't know. It's not, it's not happening that much. I'm about to claustable your brain for your, on your math side. I don't know. Claustable. Isn't that what the steroids called? <laughs> oh, claustable. Yeah. I could, I could use that. The problem is I've given up. Like, could I have done 30 times 40 in my head? Yes. But I've completely like white flag to math. 
I go, I go in that situation. I go three times four is twelve, and there's two move zeros. The, move there. the yeah, move that's the, it. move it. I would. I've just given up. Like I'll punch in rent, basic arithmetic into my calculator and I'll be like, dude, I know that. But you want to make sure. I'll do like seventeen plus nine, and then I'll be like, do it, and I'm like, six. dude, I know that. Yeah. But I've just white flagged it the whole the whole way through. People think it's a joke when people medicine. Yeah, people met us at the All Star Game, and we did a little Q and A. Like, guy came up to me and was like, "Are you really that? Like, is this a joke, right?" And I was like, "No, no." It is kind of one of those things. Like, you don't really need to know like where you're going anymore because you like it's given to you. And the same thing with the uh, math, you can just look it up if you need to. It's, I think it's okay sometimes to just let's put our brain function towards something else because we have this to help us. It's decision fatigue. You know, it's just one less thing I got to think about. Here's here. I got one for you. Don't take costable. I just hope I don't get ringworm and then I'm good. <laughs> why does he have, why does he have ringworm? I don't know. How do you get ringworm? I think you like fucking animal or something. <laughs> does Joe's McFly have ringworm? <laughs> I don't know how you get ringworm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what ringworm is. A rash on your skin. Is, you get I think it. it's touching poop, isn't it? Like I, I know that. I think you get it from touching poop. Probably. You probably get it from someone touching someone who has ringworm. I don't know, man. I'm done. I gotta get it. I. You know yeah. what? Enjoy it's your Friday, Friday night. night. Yeah. Enjoy it. Thanks for hanging out. Go uh, New York versus New Jersey in Little League right now. Just, just oh. a combination of the most fiery on mic coaches you'll ever find a speech is, every half inning this might be edited after the final version i don't care but what happened in the washington oregon game like are you doing a, a breakdown on that are you kidding me they ruined some kids dreams because you're just like the worst umpire of all time i know you're a volunteer but holy crap dude wow well, yeah he's he said fair but put his hands up foul oh he said fair and went like this yeah, that's that's I think what happens. But, Wasn't it foul on the review anyway? How did they not overturn it? I don't know what happened there. I felt very bad for the umpires because it was like a a real bad situation. They yes. are volunteers, so as much as I don't want to like ever, I know, make fun I know, of the I know. kids. It was just a tough thing. And All right. the other thing, if you're watching the the strike zone's two balls off the plate. <laughs> it is like don't get mad at the umps. Sometimes, it's been that way forever. Yeah, no, but like I think by rule in Little League, it's two balls off the plate. Oh, it is. I think so. If not by rule, it's definitely been called that way forever. Yeah, forever. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right, bro. See ya. Later.